Ladies and gentlemen, it's Monday and we are live with our live build this Monday. We are building out an awesome contact page using group pages. Um, this has not been requested enough, but I, I believe this is one of the most visited, and it's not only my opinion, it's one of the most visited pages after your homepage uh, that gets clicked on your website. This is not about funnels, this is about websites. In case you are building your website with Groove Pages, then you definitely need to have some sort of way for the users to contact you. And the contact page is used to do that. So basically you create a page where people can go to, um, take your information for, for your address, for your phone number in case they want to contact you over the phone. In case they want to write you a message, they can do it using an inbuilt form. They can also maybe see your email that you provide to the customers. This increases the trust immensely. So contact pages are very important to have on your on your websites because um, the the sites that don't have them they may look spammy. They may look like it's a it's a it's a non-real company. It's just like a, there's a logo that was created or purchased, but that's it. There's no way to actually get in contact with the business. So when you're trying to invest or purchase something for the, from that business, it would be like, mm. so there are trust, trust issues when you don't see a contact page. And I highly encourage you to have a contact page in case you are building out your website. Today in this demo, in this video, I will be showing you how to build out a full contact page. It is very nice. You will see uh, it is not hard to build. We'll start from scratch. Um, you will see there's just a bit of tweaking needed. And then I will give you some bonuses, of course, at the end as always. Um, that you probably don't know about. Um, so I believe this will be a good education for you today. So in case you are just joining in, please jump into the comment section. Just ha say, hi, David, I'm here, I'm watching, I'm from uh, London, I'm from Minnesota, I'm from United States, Las Vegas, whatever. I just want to see actually that you are here, that you are watching, and I would like to actually personally welcome you on this live stream. So head, head over to the comment section and just type in something so that I can see that you're here. Awesome, I have already uh, Ron here. Hello, Groovers from the Netherlands. Hi, hi, Ron, it's good to have you here. I have Marwin Webster from uh, Quezon City, Philippines. Uh, Tamara is watching us, hi, everyone. Um, Tamara is asking, can you use this on a Wix website? I'm not quite sure how Wix works, but if you are able to actually build out custom layouts that I'm pretty sure you can. However, I I highly encourage you to use Groove Pages. It is faster, it is better, and you will have much, many more options with the other uh, tools from Groove in case you are using Groove Pages. Uh, Martin is here watching us saying, hi, David. Tina joined us. Uh, saying hi david eldon is here from new zealand hi hello david lemon um tamara is from california here <laughs> with an awesome smiley i have a facebook user from united states um i have sukirman young from indonesia indonesia or jong i'm not quite sure how it is pronounced uh, scott from colombia it's good to have you here scott uh, syed from egypt I have Christine Case as always. She's always here. Um, Deborah Mains. Hi, David. Deborah here from New Zealand. Nice. One more New Zealander here. Irina Finkler. I'm I'm here. Awesome. I have a Fre Facebook user from Fresno, California. Um, Preeti Chopra from Canada. I have John Alexander uh, watching us on YouTube. Hi, David. Watching and uh, ready to learn at this time from Colombia. Uh, South America. Awesome. Good to have you here, John. Uh, Monique from the Netherlands. Nice. A lot of people from Europe today. Uh, oh, David Rhodes. Hello, David from David. <laughs> um, Pretty saying hi, David. Lucy Property. Hi, David. UK. Keisha is watching us. Good morning, all. Um, Eldon says, Yes, so basically in case you are watching us and this is your first time and I and I clicked on your comment and your comment came up saying Facebook user like this person here and then another one here, hi David, um, and another one here from US, please head over to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. Um, 
Eldon just pasted in the in the comments the link you would need to click. This is just the platform we're using for streaming. In case you're watching us from Facebook, you would need to actually give StreamYard access to show your uh, profile image and your name. So when you're commenting, when you're asking questions, then I can actually refer back to you and then see who is commenting. Uh, Sarah is watching us from Geneva, Switzerland. Awesome. Saying hello, everyone. Um, Chris Phelps from Tampa, Florida is here. Jeff Wells. Hi, David. Uh, will you look at Groove video today? Well, not sure. Um, Groove video will be coming out today, uh, evening time in the Americas. I will be probably sleeping by then, but most probably tomorrow morning I will be waking up and rushing to my computer like it's Christmas morning. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, Victoria Knight, uh, Aesthetics, hi David, looking forward. Awesome, so we have a good crowd here. So in case you are watching us on Facebook and you didn't do this yet, please head over to streamyard.com forward slash Facebook. Eldon shared out the link you can just click onto and then you can just get registered. Uh, Sydney Johnson saying, what's up, David? Hi, Sydney, it's good to have you here. Awesome. So I will be doing a Q&A session at the end of this training. In case you have any questions, please just make sure you put question dash and then how to, um, or basically ask your question there, or at least a letter Q and then dash so that I know this is a question that is intended for me to answer. There's sometimes where users answer each other's questions in the in the comments so for me to actually make it simpler i would appreciate if you could just type in q or question so that i know this is for me um yes yeah, so as eldon typed it out already please put a q in front of the question so david can find the questions from all other posts awesome great to have you here um miral el ramal Ramlavi, I'm sorry if I uh, pronounce it incorrectly, from Dubai, Dubai saying grooving from Dubai. Prakash is watching us as well. So we have a very good crowd watching us. So let me show you guys what we will be working on. Um, before I go uh, into explaining why do you need a contact page, I will show you what we will be working on and building out this Monday. So this will be the page that we will be building out. As you can see, it is not a very complicated page. It is pretty simple to construct, and we will work on that actually to, to construct them. So these are buttons that are clickable. Here there is a, a Google Maps that you can actually point towards your location in case you're a physical business. Uh, you have an actual um, store somewhere on the street, and you can actually point it out and then attach a Google Maps like this. We'll also be working on a footer together with all these links, contact details, getting it uh, up and running and nice and pretty. And not only that, I have seen that a lot of people were struggling which is which is okay and we will we build out the pages with on these Monday builds and everything and at the end I give you the template that is that is mobile optimized but in this video i will show you how to actually build out the page and how to think about optimizing it for mobile i will be doing another tutorial which was which will be coming out tomorrow how to actually build out a page and modify it so it looks awesome on every device there is templates you can use which are nicely done and uh, mobile responsive uh, however there is sometimes where you want to build your custom pages for example like this one we will be actually needing to go into the mobile responsiveness and uh, and optimizing it for mobile so let me just show you how it looks like when we so this is the this is how we view it on a desktop device when we scroll it a bit towards towards the middle this will be a smaller uh, laptop type of uh, layout and then later on there will be a smaller and smaller layout for tablet and then over here this is just something that I was testing and tweaking before um, this is just a mistake that just still didn't refresh but it will not appear on your sites but when you come to mobile, it is actually fully responsive and uh, nicely visible, even the footer, which was giving some people headaches. Also, the mobile, you have here the buttons, which we can actually put in the middle, make it bigger so that you can actually uh, provide to the people with huge fingers, as I call them, potato fingers, uh, to actually be able to click on that buttons in the, in the mobile menu. Um, this black will not appear on the side, and I will show you why is this happening. 
anyway, it looks beautiful. Uh, let me know what you what you think about these pages over here. Do you think that you would like to have something like this on your pages? I believe this looks great. It is not very complicated to create. It is just a couple of blocks. So this is one block, the yellow one, another block here. So this is two, three, four, five, six blocks. I believe we can manage and do six blocks on a website. Um, let me know in the comments if you would like to have something like this on your site. Do you, do you think that this is necessary on your site? Um, not only that you can actually provide all the information for email, phone, address, you can actually make this clickable and then when somebody clicks on this one, they send an email immediately, they click to call immediately you can also uh, once when this is clicked you can scroll immediately down to this uh, google maps thing uh, so they can actually interact with the map uh, themselves this is all with inbuilt tools and inbuilt elements from groove and <laughs> i will also show you how you can do this one how you can create an image and an illustration like this one for free no software needed no nothing needed how you can actually customize it to your brand and i want to give you a full on guide on how to create everything that you see on this page uh, I will just point you to how to create, how I create my logos. For example, this logo is an image. This was created, uh, this was created custom. I will point that out. This is just a, a white version of it. Um, I will show you everything, even how to create this illustration, which is great. Awesome. So I have the comments back. Great. Yes. Hi guys, Attila from Spain. A very nice page, David. Uh, yes, definitely. Super good. Uh, contact us page. Yes. Um, Marvin saying yes. This is all new to me. Sarah, if this is new to you, um, I would suggest you start with a different video. I have created a getting uh, started from scratch for the beginners. Um, getting started. Oh, here it is. A complete beginner's guide. Uh, to working with groove pages. This is the video, Sarah, I would suggest you to start with. It is fully um, timestamped. So in case you actually watch the video and you, you are stuck somewhere, you can just uh, really easily go back to the sections you need. For example, if you don't know how to publish your page, you click on here. If you don't know how to use templates or blocks or pop-ups or anything like that, you can just simply click on the video uh, timestamps that are just in the description. So this is what I suggest you to start out with. Uh, Sarah, I will also pop this link inside the, the comment section on uh, YouTube and Facebook as well. In case you on the same place where Sarah is, then I would suggest you start out there. Let me just pop it into the questions quickly. Paste. There we go. You should be able to see it now uh, in the comments. So Pablo is saying, awesome. Looks great, David, from Chris. Uh, unbelievable. Uh, Ron saying, yes. Uh, very helpful. Perfect. So after you go um, your own way after this live training, you will have a page you will know how to build a page like this. When you actually build out your page, you will know how to troubleshoot it. You will know how to build out this image and images like these for your site. It's not only this contact us page image that we will be I will be showing you how to create, but also pages for your home page or email illustrations for your home pages, for your about us pages, for your funnels, for things like this that you actually need. I will show you where to get those. You can also know after this video how to build out your your logo and then actually why you need a contact page and this is why i want with this is what i want to go and explain immediately why do you actually need a contact page so contact page as i mentioned in the beginning in case you were not here it increases trust imagine when you're going to a website that that has only one page and doesn't have any contact details it looks kind of okay but you're unsure you maybe want to reach out to them ask a question but there is no button there is no phone number there is no nothing basically that you can contact the, the business so you are immediately thinking like okay uh, if i give them the money i cannot contact them so i will not give them the money it's logical so this is why you need a contact page it increases the trust immensely and it, it basically the people that come to your page they will not think about uh it's twice in case they don't see the contact page if they don't 
have a way to contact the business that they actually give their money to, they'll just be on their way. So this is very important. In case you don't even have an address, in case you don't have a telephone number, you still can do a lot with a contact page and I will show you in a couple of uh, minutes. So simple, trust. The trust is the most important currency and e-commerce stores or websites or funnels can have. Uh, whenever you're selling something, so I just didn't, didn't change this, but your store or website needs to have a trust. Um, a contact page, contact us page has to have a goal. As I usually review uh, the pages on the Wednesdays, uh, Groove Pages Show and Tells, this is a video that I jump in on, on the live stream and I actually ask you guys to send me your links. Then I immediately, the first thing that I review is the goal. What is the goal of the, goal of the page that you shared with me? So the same way the Contact Us page has to have a goal as well. There's a couple of goals that are most common. For example, to support, to help resolve problems to actually uh, be the helping hand to your customers in case they have issues with their order with their payments with they have trouble with with something contact us page is good for support and this is the most important thing where people will be asking you questions uh with orders do you deliver here do you deliver there basically they want to have somebody to talk to for support also sales, so help potential customers make a decision, convert prospects into customers and offer a channel for bulk or warehouse orders. So in case you're selling something, in case you're selling products, it is it, the contact us page can be also used for sales. So contact us in case you want custom orders, contact us in case you have question about this and that and then, um, and you can actually contact, uh, get in contact and communicate with these people, maybe give them uh, a better solution. They want to purchase the basic product, but you think, and you can recommend them that the product, uh, the, the premium version of the product is best suited for them. So using this contact page, they can actually contact you so you can communicate with them further. Uh, press or PR, you can also get, and uh, I will show you an example on that. Um, you can actually get others that are maybe news agencies or people that want to do an interview with you. You can get them some links or an email or something so they can contact you and get in, uh, get an interview or a schedule or podcast um, interview or something like this. And this is actually good for your marketing. So actually you put up a contact us page or a PR or press page, you can call that differently than a contact us page, uh, where news, news uh, agencies and news sites and blogs and all kinds of people that are actually uh, working with uh, promoting and distributing news and information, you can work with them and provide them a separate contact us page or a PR page, press page, which kind of looks similar as what we will be creating is just uses it just has a different goal of not support, not sales, but actually providing information for these news agencies or blogs. Uh, human resources, in case you have, for example, apply for a job with us or something like that, you can also have a contact us page or at least just link looking for a job, apply here. They click that link, they can send an email immediately to you to apply. So these are some of the goals. These are not all the goals, but these are the most common goals of a contact us page. So. You can have one, you can have multiple on your page, and I can show you an example of how it looks like when a, when a site has a multiple contact us uh, sort of pages or contact multiple ways to contact them. So this is just a screenshot of a website. Uh, it says contact us. Are you a customer who needs help? This is uh, that's what the G team is for. And then here, this is Glossier team. So they can actually click over here. This will uh, be getting the the customer. Uh, this is a button where a customer clicks, and it, they can immediately send an email. When they come here, they can actually get to a help desk and, and the FAQ section where they can see most commonly uh, frequently asked questions there. But for everything else that you can see here, business and partnerships, contact this button for careers, current openings here. So you can just create something like this in case you have multiple goals that you want people to take. Um, you can use one contact us page, but you can do multiple uh, calls to action like this one uh, for, for the customers and visitors to contact you through that one page. 
so which is which is actually pretty cool in case you think about it one page has multiple goals and it is not looking crowded once you put the sales page up and then you actually have multiple calls to action it gets messy but this contact us page is something that people are searching for so they are not searching for uh, for different elements on your sales page but they will be searching for the different okay so where can I apply for the job so they go through your contact us page and then they will look for that information so this is where you can actually have multiple uh, calls to action or multiple goals on the on one page so um, I want to tell you about five traits of an on a of an effective contact us page and this is from this link with from a Shopify contact us page okay uh, I will be sharing my presentation with you guys so in case you would like to get hold of uh, everything that I'm talking about and also these links you will be able to just click on the on the links from the from the PDF that I will be sharing with you later on so the number one is to make your contact page easy to find and what I mean by this one is to put it in your navigation menu in the footer menu put also links in your contact uh, content of your page for example um, you're talking about your product and then in, in, you can also mention for more information you can contact us and then the contact us word words you can just link in uh, to go to your contact us page so multiple times on your page on your in your content you can actually refer back to the contact us uh, page which will increase the trust of the of the whole page um, yes so this is very important for trust and I want to show you what I mean by this so as you remember um, we will have a contact us page over here so basically in case you created this menu for the whole site let's say everybody that comes to your page will see this this menu the contact us is the one i want to make bolded in case you want to sell something you can click you can uh, you can put in a, in these borders uh like buy now or or something but for this purpose i wanted to put the contact us here uh, to be the the most visible thing in the navigation menu so contact us is is in has its own separate box so it needs to appear in the navigation menu in case you have a contact us page make sure you, you are making it visible for everybody that come to your page to immediately see that there's a way to actually contact this business um also make sure that the contact us is available in the footer this is why i will show you how to actually create a footer like this one and then we will be put, putting in our contact us page over here and then more contact details over here in case you want to focus on that one um at this point i don't have content pages out so i cannot show you how um how i would put the contact us word and link it hyperlink it to this page but this will be coming on in the next sorry in the next couple of videos um yes as eldon is saying to all stay on this webinar for david's buster giveaways <laughs> yes i always try to give out as much as i can uh, for you to make your life easier so that you actually don't have to start from scratch so that you have tools that you can refer back to whenever you are get stuck somewhere I need to build out a contact page but i also need some illustrations so here david is giving me illustrations i want to actually give you all the tools needed so that you can create something like this and not only something like this you can actually do more creative stuff this is just something i found that is very beautiful and i i thought and i thought i wanted to share that with you so the second one create a contact page that is welcoming and what i mean by welcoming is that you actually say something like we read we read and respond to every customer inquiry we really want to hear from you or something like our customers mean the world to us and uh, we love hearing from you or something like that basically that you are you are welcoming your your customers or visitors to the page to actually communicate with you don't think about customers when they contact you through a contact us page that they are a hurdle they are something that you just oh god i have so many contacts today i need to go through fifty thousand emails and things like this look at each of those persons each of those messages to be a huge opportunity for your business look at it look at it like money when you receive a contact email from a customer Look at it like cha ching you got money or something like this that basically you shift your thinking to to something that is benefiting you or 
or cha-ching there's a new opportunity to to do something to help somebody which is also a very very good benefit um don't think about negatives oh my god i have so many emails i need to go back to if you think like this you already lost the the whole business is actually reliant on customers so if you don't like when customers contact you this is something that you need to work on um love your customers love when they contact you love that you have opportunities just think about when you were starting out your business you actually didn't know how to actually get to talk with anybody so that was your your problem now when actually people start sending you emails and try to contact you don't think like oh my god now i have so many i don't even know what to do with them you can hire help anytime you can try to automate it with some uh, pre-made um faq sections or help desks or something like this as you can see we are also doing the same thing when you go to support support.groovedigital we are doing help desk with predefined and pre-written articles that uh, our customers can go to you can take examples from what we are doing and you can also help out your customers big time okay so just make sure that they feel welcomed to write you an email and not be like oh i don't want to contact them on the contact page because they will probably think that i'm needy or something you need to make sure that your customers feel welcome and invited to they send you an email make our day and uh, fill out your inbox with comments questions and concerns we get lonely when we don't hear from you get in touch today something like this just put in your personality and actually welcome these contacts uh, and messages from your customers okay number three include all relevant information okay this is not only the email telephone and address think about your social media profiles a map of where you're physically located an email address for wholesale orders you can also put a like like this one something to contact but you can also put something to actually do different tasks in case you want to apply for a job apply here in case you want to purchase something wholesale contact us here in case you do something else contact us here so give them multiple options in case you have multiple things that you are uh, doing in your business give them those options on the contact us page so they will not be contacting you to this email where do i send an email in case i have a question about this this is just time consuming and if you actually automate it you put all the information on the website everybody that comes to your contact page will have no excuses to actually say oh yeah but i didn't know where to email if i want to apply for it there's no not going to happen in case you give them precise and clear instructions on here so make sure that you have all your uh, ways of communication uh, on your contact us page and also business hours and expected uh, response times in case you are an, a business that opens and closes their doors you can actually put up uh, your business hours and if not you can also just mention the response times for example as we have our support is not working through the through sunday they try to be with their families to just mention this one on your on your contact us page so that people don't actually wait for a response back on sundays if you don't work on sundays so just just make sure you 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 mention it so there is no like I didn't know you didn't mention it things like this the more you can give out more information that uh, the then the person that visits your contact us page needs they will be searching for the information that they need if you if they don't need it they will not focus on that information so don't think about the contact pages oh i'm giving them so many options it's like information overload overload so in case you design your page uh, very nicely like this one so in different sections you can learn different things in on different parts of the page people will not feel overwhelmed and they will find the information they need on different parts of the site okay so feature of uh, feature a relevant call to action and i just copied over the text from the site that i i linked over here from shopify because they put it so nicely inevitably someone will land on your contact us page and not fill out the form to contact you this is a great opportunity to invite them to do something else sign up to your newsletter check out your sales uh, sale products or follow your social media the bottom of contact us page is perfect place for an inviting call to action okay so 
I didn't do it in here, but this would be an awesome opportunity. I did put here a subscribe, but this is not a strong enough call to action. In case you're selling a product or something, you really need to make it more apparent for the people that come there that you are actually uh, selling this product so they can do it. They can also get access to it from your contact us page. So in case they don't want to contact you, they just came to check out your, your page, give them uh, another call to action where they can see actually your product that you are selling. Okay, and then proudly represent your brand. This is what I mean by, by show your personality, uh, manage expectations, just put your... Uh, how you are working on your home page in case you have videos you can also put a video on your contact us page the contact us page is the only page where people want to communicate if they come over there if they fill out the form they want to communicate with you so it would be a good in case they see you maybe do a short video hey thank you very much for checking out my contact page please fill this uh, form out in case you have any issues or you need any support, please call this number below. Uh, you can also find the map where you can find our business in case you are, you are nearby, just pop by and let's have a chat. Thank you very much. Something like this, very short, very precise. You can, you can actually uh, introduce yourself even better on this contact us pages. So this is shortly of why it is important and what you can do with it and what you need to actually some kind some type of a guide to follow to have very strong very compelling uh, contact us pages but let's get the party started and actually dive in to build out this page so I will leave this page over here because I will be uh, following it so we will be starting from from seeing what this page has. So over here, this yellow section is one block, okay? On the block, I have a navigation bar element. It's very simple to put, just pull it from the elements and then just a uh, heading text, that's it. Then the next block is a two column layout over here. This is a two columns. This is the, the other column. So the, the image will be in the first column, the form will be on the second column. And on top of everything, we will just have a heading with some description. This heading and description, we will be actually copying over. As you've seen, uh, as you can see, I didn't even change the text. Um, you can actually just use the same layout. We'll just copy over these two, pop it, pop it in it, pop it in here. And then over here, these are just three column. Uh, three columns, three containers that we filled with, uh, with heading, some paragraph text, and some icons. I actually like this cool effect. Uh, so there is one icon. The other icon is just a clone of it, which has a bit of transparency. And then the third icon is just a gray copy of the whole of of this one of the first one. So it's very simple to do, but it actually looks like it's moving. It has kind of a, a flow look to it. So um i thought it's it's cool and i wanted to show you how to actually create it this one is the exact copy of this one is just change the text and then over here these are three or actually not three these are five buttons which will or would lead to the social media accounts so you can do this here and then actually pull in your social media accounts just link them on the page and then you are good with that this is a very simple map element that is available in the elements library you can just pull that in from there and then at the bottom i just used a pre-made footer but i modified it a bit and this is what i will be showing you later on so i think we are ready let's just dive into groove funnels and our groove pages and then let's just build out this page so when you are new and when you log in to groove funnels you just logged in using your username password this is what you see you come to the Groove Pages tab over here on the left-hand side, click on the Groove Pages, and this is where you can actually start your site. As you can see, I have a couple of sites that I was working on, but I will start a new one from completely completely from scratch so that I can actually show you how you would start. So in case you, you are new, you are starting a new site, you click over here to New Site. In case you want, want to add the Contact Us page to uh, an already created site, you can just open one of these sites that you are working on and then add it on here. I will start from scratch, as I mentioned, and I will click on the blank template. I don't want anything to be on it. Okay, so I will now make my screen bigger so you can actually follow it uh, a bit easier. So as I mentioned, we will be working with the first block, which will be this 
uh, yellow block and then we will be pulling in all these elements on here so block wireframes empty pull in this empty container over here and then we can close this we head over to the elements section these are the actual building elements that we can pull in on the page and we need a navigation menu so i actually use this one because this one has a logo it has a couple of links and a box already pre-made so i will just pull this into the box that i have here and then the next thing what i will do is just make it yellow so that we can recognize it very easily like this the next thing i will need is just this contact us text so this is a uh, heading one so i'll come into the elements tab text click on heading one and just pull it out here that is basically it this is my first block let me just save it and let's just build out the next block the next block as you see here is a one column text so a heading with some description let's just make that one so we go into the blocks wireframes empty and then this first one okay so empty container then what i want is title and paragraph so i click on the title and paragraph and this is what i need then the next thing so now i have the title and the paragraph this we already have on our site the next thing we need is two columns so one column is this image the second column is this container over here so we can just pull in the two column from the elements tab two column we just pull it just below this title and the, and the paragraph that we pulled in you see now we have a container where we will pull in our image so we click on media image pull it just into this container like that and then over here we will construct our form our form as you can see this white part is a form container so here below the media you can see there is this form we need to click on the empty form and pull it out here so inside here we will be populating it with everything that you see here so this send us a message and lorem ipsum this is just the copy of this one is just smaller so let's just pull in an element of title and paragraph it's going over here then the next thing we need is an input field or actually two so this one is a copy of this one and then uh, a text box so for the input field we find it under forms input field and we just pull it below this paragraph text okay then we will just edit this one later on and then uh, duplicate it the next element we need is a text area which is here so in the forms section there is a text area we pull that just below this uh, this other input field that we had so you can see when we click inside this is the text area it says it over here and then the first one is the input field there is a bit of a difference when you have a text area and an input field input field is used for short pieces of text the text area is used for bigger blocks of text in case you are expecting your customers or visitors to actually type out some things on the page like paragraphs of text or or uh, ask questions or um, or tell them what is what is the problem or something like that you need to give them the text area so there is more more uh, space to, to fill out uh, when you type in a text area it will be going let me just type try to do some it will be going into different paragraphs one below the the other okay and then if you are typing into an input field it will be typing in like this it will not be visible not everything will be visible it will be basically pulling it in a line and you will not be able to see all the text that is typed out so this is the dis distinction between an input field and a text area okay so this is now basically it we have built out this part we just need to pull in another button and then that is it as you can see here there's a slight issue we just save our page and reload it this will make it good you see it is not happening anymore so now the last thing we just need is a button 
and a button will be pulled out. Uh, did you see when I actually hold the button, it is giving me this uh, dashed border around the, around the button. When I move it around, uh, it is actually showing this uh, this border around here. So this means that we are in the form container where we actually need to be. There we go. So we place it inside. When you click on it, the button needs to be inside the form container. The text area needs to be in the form container as well this one. So these three are very important to be inside the form container. So that's basically it. Now we can save it and move on to the next part. The next part is just the same copy of this one and then three boxes. So what I suggest is maybe to just start and build this out to, to modify it and then add on the rest. It will be easier to follow. Okay, so we have now our yellow background and here is something that we don't need. Here we go. So we have now yellow background and we want this one to be yellow as well. So we click on this one where it, it is gray. We just come into the background section and in, instead of this gray, we just choose this yellow. Okay. Now it is almost perfect. We just need to actually make sure that our navigation uh, where it actually says the text of our, of our links, that this one also has the background yellow. So we come click on this home and we click on the yellow. Now everything is in the same color. Okay, that is great. Now what I want to do is I want to decide my fonts and, and colors. So in this tutorial, I used all of my fonts. Even the logo font is the same as this one, is the same as this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. So all my fonts will be poppins. I don't know why, I just loved how it looks like and I think it looks very professional. So this is Poppins, this is Poppins, this is Poppins. And then my colors are actually this kind of black-ish and then this gray. So this gray is actually um, similar to this one and it is the exact same as these ones. So I want to follow the same style guide. So I have yellow, this black and the gray. So this is what I will be working on now. So I will click on the on this home and change the font. So I'll choose the text font to be Poppins and I will make it a bit bigger. So while I'm still in the text, I can decide how big I want it. I want it to be 1.25, okay? And then I, I also want it to be bold. It looks better when it is bold. It, it is giving uh, people a sense of, of actually that this is a, it's, it is a button, it's just not normal text on the page. Good, so I only have one over here, but I want to add on a couple more pages so that it looks very similar to this one over here. So I will do that using the external links option. So I want to add on three more pages. The one will be called, um, I don't know, services, and then it will be linking to nothing. The next one will be, um, actually, let's just copy over this one, about, anything at this point, and let's just do another one, um, let's just do pricing, or no, FAQ, like that, okay, update, so it is not actually updating now, we'll just save and refresh. And then here we go. So the styling popped back for some reason, but doesn't matter. We can just pull, uh, pull back the background color and then actually we can work with the, with the text now. So we want pop-ins, we want the size to be 1.25 and we want it bold, okay? Now the color, I want it to be inside this gray. I want this to be the first one we see. So 0F1824. This will be the, the black color that I will be playing with on the whole site. The logo, I will leave it for now. I will show you later on how I created my logo on this page, but I want to edit the button. The button, I want it to say, contact us. 
like that. We can link it later on to, to the page. In case we have a lot of different pages on our site, we can link the contact us to this page that we are creating now. Okay, so we click to update. It is now showing contact us, but I actually don't want it to look like this one. I want there to not be any background, or actually we click on, we can click on this one and then pull it, or actually we can just click on the yellow because this is the yellow, okay? Um, there we go. And now in the borders, we can just add on borders all around the button. And this is the first option. When we click on this one, actually, it is asking us what what size of the border we want, how many, how, how thick should it be? So we can decide two pixels or one pixel. I believe I left it two pixels on that side, which I created, and I want it to be the same blackish color that I used for this menu items. So it is almost looking uh, as I want it. I want to change the button text uh, font. As you remember, it is Poppins. It is this black color. It is bold. And I want it to be 125, the same, same size as the other ones. However, I want this one to have a bit of spacing on the side, not one REM, but a bit more so that the, let's say 2.5, so that the, this boxed button is actually appearing a bit uh, further away from the from the rest of the menu. So this looks like it's more important. We can add on a bit more spacing. So we click on the button spacing and then the left hand side margin, we just increase to four, for example, okay? So the next thing I want to do is actually make the the inside. So basically these borders to be a bit more high like that but a bit smaller in the on the left and the right hand side like that so it looks now much better um, so we have this done we have this done the logo we will just pop in later on once we designed it so this first part is done the next thing is i want to make the contact us text over here so i will just click on this text type in contact us and then make it centered. So just click here in the text to this part, and now it is centered. I want to make it a bit bigger, like that, three. Let's just change the font, and then put bold, and then make it a bit bigger. No, actually, three is, is, is looking good. Okay, so the last thing I want to do is just paste things out. As you can see, there is a bit of spacing over here, then between the contact us and the actual menu items, and then below contact us, there is also a bit of space. So I will click on this one. Actually, I like this spacing over here. I will just add on some spacing to the bottom. So I will click on the contact us text and then come into the padding and then just pull this a bit something like this, three REM is looking nice. So this is now our header similar to the one that I have on my page that I created earlier. So I will be leaving this yellow section as it is, saving it and moving on to the next part. So the next part, as you see, we are now working with this one, get in touch with us, and then we'll just leave lorem ipsum dollar sitament and then basically until the first dot over here. So. Here is Lauren Ipsen dollar sitamet, and then here is the first dot. The rest we just delete. Okay, we don't need this part, but I want it to be centered. So this needs to be centered, and this needs to be centered. So as we will be using this and this on multiple places on our site, I will actually design one of these and then save the styling so we can easily reuse it later on. And over here, I just want to paste in the text, get in touch with us. I want to style it to pop-ins, make it a bit bigger. Mm, like 1.5, I think this is, no, I'm one, one size bigger this way. And then pop-ins and then my color that I decided with is this one, first one and I am happy with the, the heading. Now, by clicking on the description text, this lorem ipsum text, we just 
make it poppins as well i will try to increase the size of it a bit and then work with yeah we'll just take this one this gray option over here it looks good and we just need to space them a bit away from each other and the way i do it is i just select the lower part the lower um, element and put on some upper margin like that 0 0.5 now it is nicely nicely styled nicely spaced out the last part is i want to just put in some spacing between the yellow section and the and the text so the way i do this is i actually choose the container you see now i have this container chosen over here and then i will put some spacing on this one i'll put on margin and space it out this way let's just leave it on six six aria now it is looking nice good so for some reason my block moved away as well let me just see why did that happen okay let me just move it back and then work with the block itself i don't want my block to be starting from here so i will click on the block and space out the block so in the in the when i want to space out the block i actually do not padding, but here, padding on the top. So only on the top. I made a mistake at the beginning. Six on the top. So now this whole section is my block. Okay. It is looking good. Let's just save it. And now I want to save this styling. So this is going to be saved in the global styles just close this one so in the global styles i want to click create new style and i save it title text m and then over here this description i want to just save it as well as description text like that so now it will be easier for me to work with all the other sections that are styled very similarly here and here and even here, these are the same stylings. Good. So let's just go back. And then here, the image will be coming into the center of this container. So I will click on the container, which is inside the layout. So this is the left-hand side column. I will click in the middle. And then in the layout, I will just pop it in the middle over here and the middle over here like that. So now it is immediately centered inside uh, this container. For this part... I want to actually have the text copied over, send us a message. Title goes here, send us a message. Like that, and immediately I can apply the global style that I saved from the upper one, and this is the title description, okay? The only thing is that here, this text is aligned to the center, but on this one, I want it to be aligned to the left-hand side. So I'll click on it and align it to the left-hand side. There we go. Now, this description is a bit too long. I don't want to keep, to ev keep everything. Here, you can put in some text description how to fill out the form, what you're going to do with it, or maybe mention that please fill out the form and then um, somebody will will be in contact with you uh, as soon as possible or something like this now i just want to apply the description text which is here i also want to align it to the left now this text i want to be a bit bigger than this one so here i just resize it a bit smaller like 1.5 is looking good and this one as well maybe to one rem it is looking pretty nice now okay as you can see there is a bit of spacing between the the upper column and then the the lower columns so i will click in the middle of these two somewhere around here now my layout two by two is chosen this is the layout that has the two columns this is one column this is the two column and then here i will add on top margin and now you can see that it is moving away from the from the upper text here so let's just put three rem like that 
now the fun part starts so let me just click inside over here and i want the form container to be chosen this is my form container on the form container itself i will add on a shadow and this will be a large shadow okay now you can see that there is actually this white which stayed white is the form container and then below the form container there is another container which is not very visible but it is the normal container it is not for managing a form um, in case you haven't seen i created a video on actually working with custom forms it is on youtube it's easiest to search on youtube forms or form groove pages like that and how to create a custom form inside groove pages i actually explained in depth of why and how the form is created and then we are just following the same principles in this video so i will just drop in the the link of this video in youtube and also on facebook so you can follow it there like that in case you are interested in creating your own custom forms you can look through there and then uh, learn how to create those but what i will do is actually in this container that is holding my form container i will space it in a bit i will use padding to push everything inside a bit like that okay let's just leave it on four rem on both sides as you can see what i did now is i chose the outer container which had an inner container and the outer container used the the padding to push in the inner container so it became a bit smaller so this is what i did using the outer container if you would do that inside the form container let me just show you what what would happen in case you are inside the form container you're trying to do spacing now with padding everything would be staying as it is it's just that the elements inside would receive the padding so i thought that this is looking ugly and i just used the out, outer form outer container to push in the form container which is actually uh, a bit nicer to manage so now we have that one we just need to oh not this one but we just need to add some spacing on here add some spacing here 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 uh, get our forms sorted and then it will be actually looking nice so i want to select this input field as you can see we are on an input field i want the background to be not this darker color but this uh, brighter gray color and then i want to add inside the input placeholder um what it says your name here full name okay in placeholder input placeholder which is in the configure tab is going to say full name okay. that's it update and now in the design i want this text to be poppins poppins i will not change anything else okay that is done i just want to duplicate it and instead of full name i want to look for your email address like that and then over here i also want to work with the background change the color to this brighter gray and inside here type in your message awesome. all right update and we are almost done the last thing we want to do is just space things around so i want the text area to be spaced away from the from the other one and we can use one rem on here over here as well one rem and then from here i'll actually move it as well away from the upper text so here i'll just use 1.5 rem as you can see when we are pulling uh, when we are putting in spacing in the whole thing our form is becoming larger and larger or actually taller and taller and this is how i got this this layout to be so tall yeah good now my button i want my button to be in the center and then to to be full width to the whole thing so i click on the button let's just design it first i want yellow i want my text to be in poppins i want it to be this darker uh darker gray in bold and i want to to say send message 
here you can also do something creative like smash that send message or something like that it's your creativity and you can use your own personal uh, way of talking in case you have uh, videos on YouTube that are talking like smash that like button or so you can actually translate this into your contact us forms or contact us pages and things like this uh, you can use the same wording what you are actually using when talking. So this is highly suggested. So I'll just leave it at send message. Send message. Like that, update, and then save. In the design, I want my text to be a bit bigger. So I will put it on 1.25 as the same as here. And then now we go to sizing. We will size our uh, button. So sizing, I want the width to be relative to the parent. The parent is the form container. And I want it to be 100%, okay? And now in the text, we can just click in the middle over here. And now it is aligned to the center. And then we are actually done with that. The only thing we need to do is just space it out a bit and using one RE and we can ar ar arrange that. Um, bum, bum, bum. Good. So the next thing is inside the form container, I want to add some padding. So on the top and bottom, I want to add on some white space like that. Let's leave it at three. And then on the side, let's just increase this to 1.5 or something like that. Now it looks great. Awesome. It looks pretty similar to the one we have over here. Opa. Here we go. Maybe we just need to actually leave a bit of space like that. Now it looks great. It looks very, very similar to this one over here. The next thing uh, is to actually drop in our image, but I will leave this one for, for last. We'll create our logo and we will create our image or illustration together later on. So I'm happy with this part. Let's just go and build out the rest of the page. Then what we are missing is this block over here, this block over here, map and a footer. And then we're done, guys. This is very quick. In case I wouldn't be talking, I could have built this out in like 45 minutes, 50 max. Um, yes, it is very straightforward. So now we already have these elements. We can just create a new block. Well, not all blocks, but here in empty, I want to pull in this new empty container. And then I want to just duplicate this one. Here we go. Where is my button to actually drag over something? It is not appearing correctly. Okay, so it doesn't seem to be appearing correctly when I want it to be. It is here, but it is not functioning as I want it. Anyway, we can just pull in just a new element. We already saved the style, so we can work with that. It seems to be a, a small glitch that we can work around. There we go. So I don't want this text over here. I just want to center it, apply the global style for the description. I want to center this one, and apply the global style for the title. Okay. So now we have it the same thing. Let's just copy over this part is it in here and now we have the same thing great the next thing is to actually pull in the three blocks so now we go uh, sorry not three blocks three columns so instead of blocks we go to elements and columns we choose i chose the three columns and this is what i will be working with okay not i just want to save it but i mistakenly click the other button uh, so yeah so inside these columns I want them to have a shadow I want them to be white inside and then to have this text and then some icons so this is also very simple to do we can just apply the background white like that we can pull in the elements of the title and paragraph and I just want this one to say email Email, like that. So up, I apply the global style of the title, left align it, or actually this is where the email goes. And over here, I just want uh, 
to the description text left align it and then just do contact at lemon.com here is where you would add on your email okay this is now done we are still missing the icons so i will just pull in one icon and then i will play with this so the icon is chosen we go to configure and we choose the envelope so i can type in envelope here from yesterday i know that i want to work with two xl sizes apply yellow and then here update actually this is not the two xl i want the five xl in the footer will be the two xl here we go so 5xl is going here and now when i have some content over here i just want to add on the shadow large like this so i can actually see my container it needs a bit of more love so let's just uh, work on that now oh i clicked out mistake here we go i will add on some spacing on all sides so that it is nicely aligned like that but I will play with the sizing. I don't want it to be as big as it is. 75% or 80% is good. However, I will add on some more padding on the top and the bottom so that it, 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 it looks like a square box. 3.5, that is fine. Okay, now we can just um, add some top padding to this one, our margin because we want to push the, the actual icons away from the text. So this is where I selected the icon and applied some top margin spacing. Now, um, when we duplicate our icons, they will be going next to each other. So when we duplicate it, we just want to apply a slight transparency of 50% to this one or 40 for 60% and then push it a bit on the side using the padding one orium and then the next one we can just click on this one and duplicate this and then just change the text color icons can be edited using the text and just add this color over here decrease the transparency to 40 percent and it is actually done <laughs> very simple guys it doesn't have a lot of tinkering with so now we can click over here click inside this container save the actual style of the container come over here paste in the style of the container bam copy over this one let's see if it if we can duplicate it oh no i know why we cannot do that because this alone is one element so let's just try to duplicate this here we go so now we can just left align it left align this one and now we can just duplicate our icons as well or we can pop them into a separate container we can do that one as well so you just pull this one in here pull this one in here and then pull this one in here now they are in a in a container and then to make our life easier we can just click on this container duplicate it and pull this one over here to the side the last thing we need to do is type in telephone or just phone add on some dummy phone number for this tutorial uh, maybe one two three dash four five six dash seven eight nine dash ten dash or eleven something like this okay and now here we just change the icons so i want the phone this one bam i want this one to be also phone i don't need to change anything because it is already set up we just duplicated it and on here the last thing i will need to do is just change this color to this one and then we can just choose phone m update voila this was pretty simple now we just apply the styling to this last container which is global styles container let's copy over this bam 
click inside this one click inside this one now it is aligned let's duplicate the whole container of the icons change over this one to a map um, update map um update and then the last one is also just map you can also duplicate these you don't have to search the the icons i found this to be working a bit quicker so there we go now we have the exact styling that we wanted what we still need to do is just click over here to lay out three by three and then uh, make some spacing on the top one separated by four rem and then also space this one out actually the whole block using some top padding for rem 4.54 now let's put it on five here we go that is that is the other section that we wanted to work with maybe we can add on the address i forgot that and then copy over one groove road las vegas united states oh. that's it voila let's save it and let's analyze the next part so this is also very simple we have one block with the same things that we have here and then one two three four five buttons which are styled uh, styled differently but we can just create one and then change over the styling of uh, of the other ones so let's just create or actually pull in a new wireframe block empty okay drop the block in there and i will immediately space it out so that we have a bit of more visibility maybe five like that and then this container Okay, so I don't think, mm, anyway, we'll just copy over this one and pop it in here. And then we need buttons. So my buttons are here. I just pull in a button and I will click on this container over here and make sure that everything is aligned in the center and in the middle vertically great so now my button is here when i duplicate it it needs to actually come to the side so because it is not doing that i will need to pull in another container like that so once i place the buttons in the container there should be acting uh better which is centered in the middle but I want the button to be in line flex. So now when I duplicate it, it will be coming next to it. Perfect. There we go. Let me just add on a bit of padding at the bottom of this block so that you can see it better. There we go. Maybe a bit more. There we go. So now we can actually see what we are working on. Good. So what we want to achieve is actually type in social media over here. And uh, this Laura Mimpson text description, copy over, pop it in here. And then the buttons, I want to style them to look like this. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Dribbble, Snapchat, each one of them to have the brand color and then to have their own uh, social media names. So let me just do Facebook, like that, update. And then as you remember, text is Poppins. I want it to be bold, and I will try to make it 125, okay? The color of the button I will leave as white because we will need the brand color of this button, and I will just copy it from here. You can also look into Google, of for social yeah uh, logo colors and then you can actually get them from here you can pop in here 
and then they will be giving out the actual colors of the the hex codes that you can use so instagram you can use the that purple blue what i have we can maybe play with this one uh today so that it is looking a bit differently so not this blue color but the purple one uh facebook i have copied over we just need to pop this color that we copied into not the text but the background area click on this circle add on the color and then we have it actually done now the next thing i want to space it out a bit on the top and bottom I want to add on a bit of margin like or sorry padding a bit like that 075 and on the sides maybe 175 i think look, this looks good and i will choose the whole container that is holding our icons and move it a bit below like that 3 rem and now i can just simply duplicate this button so now on this button it will be saying twitter update and i can either copy the color of twitter from here which is this one or i can just copy the color over from my site which i used yesterday but let's just leave it as it is there we go twitter now the next thing i just want to space it out a bit away from our facebook button one rem is fine good so we duplicate this one it will say instagram update we can come into design of the background and then add on this purple color here like that this is our instagram then we are missing dribble and snapchat these are not very popular uh, platforms in case you don't need it you don't have to put it but i included it because it looks great and the design of dribble i'm not sure if this will have it here four square is very similar pink dribble here we go there we go so that's the pink of from dribble and the last one is snapchat so Uh, there we go snapchat has this weird looking yellow color i think this was above there we go great so snapchat background color paste bam because of the text is not visible in this strange yellow, I'll just add on my black color to this one, and then we have it styled nicely. There we go. It is looking very similar to the one that I have. It is just, I think, a bit, bit different colors, yeah, but everything else is the same. So now we can just add on some spacing, not so much as we have now, and then add on the next block. So I will take off the 16 padding and maybe leave it at eight like that and then the next block wireframe empty empty container here as you can see the whole block is a map so this is what i will do call to elements and just scroll down until you see here the other section the first one is google maps just pop it in here it will start to load and actually you can click on the map go below to the container you need to be on the container head over to sizing and here this max width you click on it scroll down to the bottom and uh, press 100 percent now you can see that immediately our map is sized 100 percent then when we click on the map we can size the height so not 16 but 32 now we have a bit bigger to work with before it was only this big now when we increase it to 32 it is a bit bigger and it looks better when it's published on a site okay that is that is basically it for the map there's nothing else we need to do in case you want to uh, modify the address of the map you just come into the configure button and you type in your address click update and it is it is done good 
now the last block we need to to work with is the footer and the, for the footer i was using a pre-made one so blocks wireframes footers and then here we have this one where we have in one column some links in the other column some links subscribe some text and basically this is the one i was using i just pull this at the bottom of it and i can immediately work with these uh, elements that i have here i will apply the title text and what i have here quick links quick links oh and i want to just make it a bit smaller 1.5 is great and over here as well i want the title text and then to be contact details contact details I want it to be 1.5 there we go and pop both of those to white and do it this way or actually this way white I want these links to also be white um, one can say home another can say services or actually I will just create one and then save the style and apply it to all the other ones. So the home should be Poppins. I want it to be 1.25. I want it to be white. And basically that's it. So I will create a new style for link. Oh, I don't hear the text I want services update design beep boop you click out you click back in and then it is applied um, this next one will be about update design global styles link you click out you click back in and then bump the next one will be um, FAQ, update, design, global style, link, click out, click back in, and there we go. Configure, this will be contact, design, global style, link, click out, click back in, do, 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 do. there we go. Um, the next one we will do similarly however we will not use links we'll use these list items um i will just add on this color to be the description text left align white a bit smaller 1.125 okay i will actually delete this and just duplicate this there we go and over here I'll actually not touch anything else. Um, maybe just put one of these to white so that I can see it when I made everything darker. So I'm now in the background section. I want to actually uh, put it to this dark gray slash blue slash black color. Um, so I will actually choose my color. Now, I, as you can see, everything that we put to white, it is visible. Everything that we didn't put to white is not so much, not so visible, but it's still okay to work with. Um, I will just... Should I? Oh, yeah, should. Um, I will copy over the style this button because this is a normal button. This one is a submit button. So if we copy over the style from this one, it will not work properly when we resize that the the whole page so this button is a normal button um, because you can see it, it has a link to this submit button it doesn't have the actually i put in the wrong button this was my fault it's good that i saw it so we need the form submit button now this actually says form submit so i can actually copy over this style as well you see there is mistakes I even do mistakes, so I'm not perfect. Well, I kind of am, but not today. <laughs> um, this is yellow button. There we go. And then we can just delete this. We don't need it. 
we just want to edit this one background yellow text poppins color dark gray um, 25 bold and it needs to say send message perfect there we go in sizing i want it to be relative to the parent 100 percent and it is already styled properly spacing <laughs> yes it is recorded good thank you very much eldon for checking me out i when i think nobody's watching i always have a couple of people that that say hey we're watching <laughs> no but it makes me happy that you are um there we go so i quickly recorded the or actually quickly fixed the issue i wanted to show the distinction between the the normal button and then the submit button it actually says form submit it has this configuration it only has button action submit and reset and the normal button has a link to and multiple different options so these two options are uh very different from each other good so as i save the style from the previous button i can just apply it to this one and this is form submit so i actually need to save this form submit button god david form button oh and now here design apply the style for form button very well the only thing we are missing is yes this we want it to be auto and it has some spacing added on i don't know why let's just remove this to zero let's just remove this one as well to zero it just messed everything up let's just go back to where we started from and yeah let's just work with the text pop-ins this type of black background yellow bam there we go does it have some spacing it doesn't but this one has some spacing so we'll just take this off because i want them to be touching touching hands um here in the spacing or sorry not the spacing in the background i want this to be um this type of brighter gray the text needs to be poppins okay this one and i will just leave it as it is this one is nicely styled but the next thing i want to do is pull in list icon elements there we go there we go. so it is not very visible because it is uh, dark in color but let's just pop it on white and the icon as well the icon needs to be yellow so this is what we will be working with everything else all these links we can delete because we will be working with uh, icon list items we want to achieve this look so email contact at lemon telephone and then here we actually need to do the the map um, icon there we go <laughs> Uh, you always like poppins says your friend <laughs> yeah i actually don't know why it, it looks so good uh, on sites every site that i create i i am in love with it because it looks it looks very the font is is very well made so this one is an envelope okay. envelope there we go this one so i know that this is 2xl from when i was working with it yesterday and there we go here i will just type in contact at lemon.com i'll just copy paste it so that it is quicker because i want to show you how we go and modify it for other devices and i also want to show you how to create the logo and that illustrations that i promised you it will be a bit longer video it will not be the, the normal shorter two hour video. It will be a longer two and a half hour video. But yeah, I'm trying to go fast faster. Hello, update. 
and then here we pop in this one just type in your phone number of course you don't use mine you don't copy over mine because it would be strange if somebody answered this one um but map oh to excel <laughs> It reminds me of Mary Poppins. I think David Lemon was trained by her in his youth. I'm not quite sure, but I love the movies from from for and about Mary Poppins. I actually watched Mary Poppins first time when I was, I think, 15 or 16 years old, and it was like me. But then when the the movie came out with Tom Hanks, where actually they explain the whole story about Mary Poppins. This was actually like, wow, this is so good. Okay. So I just want to space it out a bit so that they're not stuck together. And then also the whole container below the contact details. I just want to add on some more spacing. It doesn't work. And just padding. There we go. Awesome. So this is done. Um, this logo I will set up later on. We can click on this this line, try to navigate it. Here we go. It's a stylable element. Here, using the background, as you can see, there is a green dot. This means that there is some styling. We just choose the yellow color. Here we go. Now we have a nice yellow divider. But now the tricky stuff comes into place so we want to add in some text over here and we want to add on this privacy policy in terms and condition and the most tricky and the trickiest thing that i will do today is placing this dot in the middle and you will see why so now we have our logo already placed here we'll just replace it later on um however to modify a pre-made footer that was that was created is a bit tricky but i will try to not mess it up a lot so as you can see first placing a container inside it is quite hard so i just pulled in a container placed it next to the logo so this logo is inside one container and now we have another container next to it inside this container actually while we have it selected i want it to be in the middle and in the center we will pull in some some text actually i can duplicate this one and then just pull in this one it doesn't allow me to pull in this one so i will just um, get some paragraph text inside here it is black you cannot see it but when i reveal it with the white color it is now visible and then in here i want to say copyright 2020 all rights reserved this is just a normal paragraph text, nothing fancy. Here we go. I paste this in, choose the poppins as the font, and then we are basically all set. Now the tricky stuff comes in. Um, inside here, as you can see, there is a container over here. This one. Inside, I want to place not icons as we have it, but text elements and not only one i want this one to be a link text link this one to be a text element or a paragraph text and this one to be actually a, a copy of the of the text link and the way why i do it because i don't want everything to be to be clickable i want there to be a distinction and one part is clickable and then the other part is also clickable if i would have done it with just a normal paragraph text i could have chosen this and then link it to something but I actually wanted to uh, to make my life complicated and just to test out what i can do so let's give it a shot again text link i click on it and pull it inside here now it is visible. Let me just make it this one. God, white. There we go. So now we can see the text link. So now in here, I don't. I will not delete anything at this point. In here, I want. I want some paragraph text. I will also make it white. And I will just leave one character, the letter M L. Okay. 
and then I will work with these two try to delete the these elements I will only leave the Twitter the white Twitter link inside there and okay so we have clicked on the L button itself I will copy over this dot paste it in here see why is it complicated um, you could I could have tried maybe to there we go I could have tried maybe to work with it while it was um, while it was a big paragraph text however why to have everything easy um, when it can be complicated privacy policy like that and then we duplicate it we pull it over to the other side take it on the other side and then terms of service um, for some reason this dot appears to be very very high on that on inside the, the paragraph text I'll just I'll just delete it and try to to have something else um, it didn't work out as I wanted to because this is a normal text icon of a dot I just place it in there and then it was center aligned for some reason it it is appearing uh, very high on there but maybe I can use an icon in the middle of these these two okay icon dot I will just use this dot donut and XS white yeah. It kind of looks okay. It's not the one I wanted, but it's fine. So I will choose the donut and space everything out on the both sides to one REM. Maybe not so much. Maybe 0 0.5 REM. There we go. And then delete this Twitter. Good. So it's not exactly as I wanted it to be, but it is kind of okay. Um, so the last thing I want to add on some padding on the top and the bottom and I choose the block spacing padding top and bottom bim, bim, bim. four I think this is looking nice maybe five here we go and this is how I will leave our design so actually we went and duplicate or actually created our design and it is looking pretty nice now the next things are to create the illustrations and then to make it mobile responsive because we will also need to work with the sizing of the different images uh, i think david likes complications yeah kind of <laughs> um good so now in case you were following so far i will be sharing out these two links which are which are very good tools that you can use. First is ondraw.co. Okay. And let me click on it immediately. So I show you what this is. Ondraw is an actual open source illustration uh, library, and you can use it. You can use illustrations in any project, commercial or personal, without attribution or any cost. Truly open license, babe. Uh, so once you click on Browse, you can actually see all kinds of different illustrations that you can use for your own designs. You can just click on it, download it in SVG. This is what you would need to download. Or in case you don't want to, in case you just want to use it as it is, with this purple and gray and black and things like this, you can use it as it is. Um, I will actually show you how to customize these ones. So now you have the illustrations that you can you can work with. And if you keep scrolling, it will be just getting more and more and more and more. So all these you can use in your uh, in your sites. So let me just choose one and actually roll with that one. Mm. 
something that is talking about communication or contact, maybe. Mm, let's just use this one. So this person, OK, here we go. Now we have our SVG downloaded. SVG is a vector file. So the next tool I want to share out with you is a tool to actually modify these SVG files. And this is the method draw. So this is this tool, and I am sharing it inside this as well. Oh, here we go. So now you have the what, and now you have the how. So this is your editor. You just pull in the SVG that you downloaded inside here. You can see the image is pretty small. So just click the shift and drag it out. Make it bigger. There you go. Now we have this, uh, this person. Let's call him Joshua. This is our Joshua, and we can edit Joshua's uh, colors. So now that we have imported him, we can click on his T-shirt. So you click actually two times so that it this um, transparency background appears. And now we can click on his T-shirt. And then immediately here at the left-hand side, you can see that the, that the color is this purple. So using this, we can actually take our yellow. And as this is our brand color, and use the color yellow instead of this purple so i just pasted in using the Control v or command v on a mac okay and there we go so now we can change the sleeves on joshua's t-shirt paste there is a little bit of purple on the other sleeve as well so just change that one um okay so now we have this little uh line we can just change that one as well okay but Perfect. OK. There is a purple dot. I don't want purple in my designs, but I want this uh, yellow. OK, this one as well. This one as well. There we go. So now we actually took this illustration and we created a custom made uh, one that that is actually following our brand colors. Because our site is in yellow, we are following this same yellow color on our illustration. In case you want to go further, you can uh, take the, the color that we are working with. Actually, I didn't apply it here. There we go. I can take this color and then edit Joshua's hair color as well and his shoes and everything basically. So if I want, I can go in there. I will not do that, but you can. You can just click on his trousers. You can click on his shoes. You can click on this line, what he's walking on and actually change everything around. Um, once you are finished, you click File, Export as PNG, okay? Now you can see that this transparency uh, has disappeared and now you can actually click Again, export as PNG, and now you can save the image. I can save him as yellow. Joshua. Perfect. There we go. Yellow Joshua has been downloaded. And now I have yellow Joshua as an image, which we can use and upload into our library. So I clicked on this placeholder image. Configure, choose image. Let's just pull in the yellow Joshua over here. Bam. Click the upload button. And here is our yellow Joshua. Select. Bada bim, bada boom. We created a custom illustration. And now you know how to do that. Um, now Joshua is in our. Uh, our site, we can modify the, the size of the image, but I will just leave it as it is. I, I think I like how it looks like. Um, the next thing I want to show you another tool that I use for, for building out the logos is Photop. If you were following me from previous videos, Photop is a Photoshop that is basically online. So how I usually start is by a new project, I can decide what I want in pixels. I usually choose width to be something around, I don't know, 600, and then this one to be 300. This is enough for my uh, for my logo. I will just zoom in a bit. 
like that so that we can see more but um yes yeah, so i just i just had a look at the comments thank you very much guys um <laughs> bada beam bada boom prakash said wow david thanks for these tools no worries prakash um your friend saying dropping the candy secrets tool you use huh <laughs> exactly um so yeah when i'm starting out with a logo i actually start out with a, a white template or a white page use the text tool click on the white white uh canvas over here and then actually start typing out something i will immediately change it to poppins poppins to be my font because why not and then i will type in type out lemon okay for some reason i don't think on poppins it is chosen but we just need to choose the weight of it so i want it to be bold like that and i want it to be big so i can click the control shift and then pull it out so lemon is getting bigger and bigger and i can just place it somewhere in the middle click out now i have this uh, typed out as lemon now i just need some some icon and i use flat icon i already have it saved over here which is flat icon.com okay i will copy this one as well to you guys in the chat Flat icon M flat icon M and photo P as well. Photo P is the other tool that I'm using. There we go. Enjoy. Oh, Eldon already typed it out. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, photo P is where I go to download my icons. So I can just type in lemon and in the previous video I used which one I used I used something like this oh yeah so in this logo I used I used this one but today let's just use this one for example okay so you can choose you can you need to log in and then you are able to modify the the, the logo itself in case you want to choose different colors so actually it looks it looks differently you can do that one inside here but i'll just leave it on black on original and then just click the download button you have different sizes you can download i just usually download the 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 regular one and then inside photo p i can just pull it inside um resize it so i click shift and then click one of the corners like that click out click back in and then basically i have my my logo done i come to the background click on this uh little locket that is there and now i can delete my background now when i save my image or save my logo it will be transparent so i can just resize it something like this i don't want all the white space to be visible click enter so i resize it using this crop tool I just cho chose the part that I want to leave. And then after that, I can export it as a PNG. Okay. And then this is it. Now I want to also save a white version of it. So I click on the white color, download PNG. Great. I go into photo P, double click the text over here. And I just change the color to white. Okay now i can simply select this pull in the new white logo or you can actually leave this one on pull on the white logo here and you can know how to resize it how big it should be something like this there we go so i can just delete the, the black one only the left uh, the white one is left and I just save this one, export it as PNG, save it as new project, actually, new project, right, okay. here we go. So I can come in here, choose the black logo, choose image, new project, here we go, upload it, select 
update it's a bit too big but we can resize it so the sizing i want to be i want to do it relative to the parent and then i can leave it at 25 percent is fine okay it is now my logo is attached in here and the white version i want to put on the bottom over here so i just upload the white like that select update it is now too big you see so i will go to design sizing and i will just put max width and relative to the parent okay i think i need to resize some things definitely this one needs to be spaced out um let's just see how it works when we space it out like that So the footer is always the trickiest to, to do. For some reason, I always have issues with the footer. But let me just try to, to work with the height and not the width relative to the parent, not relative to the page. For some reason, it is not going bigger than this one. But I can just leave it as it is. and. In the layout of this one okay so i think this is the reason the reason let's just let's just turn it off and then just push it down a bit using this 175 it is not looking the, the best 1.5 it's much better however i still want to move this one away space it out like that to auto awesome so there we go now we have a page that is looking kind of decent on a desktop but we don't want kind of decent on a desktop we want kind of okay all around so um, are you guys ready to make this puppy mobile responsive? I just need to put some air conditioning on. And yes, this will be a bit tricky now. There will be some things that we will need to modify on each of the device and then come back and modify on the, the, on the bigger devices. So this was a two hour build. I want to show you really step by step on how to go through everything uh and then modify everything um the forms you already know how to set up so you need to make sure that all of these are named properly so name or f name or l name or any of the 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 tags you need to use according to your uh, uh, marketing provider or email service provider um these ones as well so message and things like this then you come into the to the form container and from here, you can actually set it up to be uh, integrated with a Zapier or MailChimp or whoever you are using. Then in case you want to link in these, these buttons, you can just choose link to URL, and then you link it to your Facebook. You choose Twitter, you link it to your Twitter, and so on. If you want to link in these contact at lemon.com, for example, you just come over here, and then you select the text. Using this one, you type in mail to, double uh, column, and then contact at lemon.com like that there we go enter and now if somebody clicks on this one it is actually going to open up a mail um, emailing your email app that you are using to actually send out emails um, same thing here if you want this one to be clickable you can use the same things um, the same knowledge basically just to click on it and then set it up as mail to for these ones these are links text links that you can also link using url you can link it to a different page or you can link it to a block or somewhere where you want it to be this is a form input form you set it up with a with the names this is a button uh, submit button and then below that is the actual form container this is where you set up the integration okay so that is all done you just need to click on them and then set them up. I will not be going into this one because in most of the previous videos, 
sorry i mentioned this same exact things but i never mentioned how to properly resize it i usually finish with the build here we go here here is a template but now i want to dive in and show you what the problems could be when you are working with this let's just do a brief overview of how it looks like on different devices so you can see immediately on laptop we would need to modify it let's just scroll down or here we need to center these columns a bit to on this side we have the the block or the container very close to the border and on here it is very far away this looks good this looks good the footer looks good we just need to modify this part the rest is okay okay tablet here is where the fun starts in the tablet modes and the mobile modes so you can see our menu navigation menu is completely out of shape we need to work on that one um, this is kind of good Joshua is hanging on to his form over here um, getting in touch this one is looking nicely this we need to work on we need to work on this one you see the font is too big and then it is not showing up not displaying nicely the the map is fine but the footer also needs a bit of love this one will be stacked on top of each other so we can actually increase the logo on here we can or we don't have to remove this contact us button this menu is looking nice um okay joshua needs to be a bit smaller the form is looking fine these ones need to be modified social media icons need to be worked on and the footer actually looks kind of okay maybe the subscribe button to be on this on the in the middle but i can also leave it here as well it looks it looks nice so the footer i don't think this needs to be worked on in the tablet view but let's just have a look on the mobile view so you see these ones are just completely out of shape we need to really modify all of these social media icons um, this one needs to be worked on i don't know why this container is bigger than the other one the lemon as the as the logo is barely visible we need to work also on the, the contact us button i want to remove completely on here but yeah let's just start from scratch let's just save refresh and then jump into each each device separately um this will probably be a longer video than what i intended to it to be but just yeah if you want if you think this is entertaining or interesting or important you will find it uh, find it uh, find time for it but yes let me just work on the on the navigation over here so i want this one to be spaced out a bit better so i can maybe work with sizing relative to the parent to size it out a bit better okay it is not working correctly relative to the page here we go it is a bit better however I still am not very satisfied with it so maybe we can do is space it out what if we click on each of these separately nav bar okay so this is the whole navigation bar um thanks for letting me know Keisha you see um I was not paying attention to this one I have all my my uh, my devices um highlighted and this is something that Keisha mentioned to me so thank you very much for doing that Keisha um this is how I was I want to actually click only on the laptop device when I'm editing only the laptop device as you can see I'm working with this one so I want to actually modify this because it is looking pretty bad on these two devices as well so I will click one more time on the laptop so all these devices will be changed except the the, the desktop will not be changing so relative to the parent okay this is not the one we want relative to the page this is a bit bigger so this desktop will not be changing only these ones so on here I want to see if we have any other spacing here we have spacing 
that is fine it is not affecting our menu um, I wouldn't use pixels when you use pixels it actually gives you the option to resize it as you want however it could mix up the design on other devices as well so let's just try pixels for now but let's just see how it works with the other uh, other devices okay i think the pixel is most of the time that is messing up the design of the okay i, th I think the, that as we modified it with pixels this cannot be modified now so let's just pop this back to relative to the page okay this needs playing with this is not so straightforward as it should be but this is going to be fixed very soon once we have this drag and drop feature it will not be giving us any difficulties anymore so i think this is the issue that is happening over here that it gave us pixels immediately around each of these as you see zero pixels let's just move it back to zero and then sizing relative to parent okay i think i figured it out so this was not the same when i was resizing this uh page that i made previously it was not the case it was very straightforward i just clicked over here uh, using the sizing i resize it but it is actually good that you can see how and what am i trying uh, so that when you get in a situation like i am now then you know how to actually manage it so i don't want anywhere to show pixels pixels is something that is very bad for mobile responsiveness so i will try to to modify each of these separately as they are about like that um i want to move away the spacing around this one sizing relative to the page let's just see how it will be looking like services okay and home this is something oh this is something when you're creating your custom pages you need to do custom modifications for uh for the responsiveness as well there's no way around it unfortunately at this point okay so the sizing of this one is auto okay now i have it i have it fixed on all these devices it should be different now we will need to go and edit it separately on those as well but on this one i, I kind of like it how it looks looks like but on here i also want to modify this to be relative to the page and then space it out so that it is looking okay if i put it to auto it actually gets pushed together relative to the parent it is not the one that i want relative to the page it is giving me option but it is putting a bit of spacing over here maybe i can work with the text centering yes yeah, so i actually clicked on the button and just center the text to this to be in the in the exact center so this gave me the, the desired look over here i want to increase the the logo on the laptop and the smaller devices and then i will go and edit the other devices later on like that okay so now the laptop is looking okay i want this one to be spaced out a bit from the top and let me just go into desktop and see if anything changed no nothing changed perfect good so we are now in the horizontal tablet view i want the first thing is to make the text size smaller and to make the sizing of it a bit smaller Relative to the parent there is a bit too much space between and i think this is because we modified each one of them separately but i think that is fine 
I will also modify the text on here on the button put one REM and then put the text to the center and then the sizing I want it to be a bit smaller let's just try this other option no relative to the page I will leave it at 12 but I will make the spacing on that side a bit it's actually not pulling over the borders for some reason there we go. I'll just leave it like this let's see if increasing the the logo changes something on the page okay so I increased it completely now we could go into the sizing and adjust the spacing we don't want that to do it we can adjust it this way a bit I believe yeah I don't know why it's giving us so hard time um, let me just save this for now and show you what I did on the on the previous page here we go awesome so as you can see over here I just came into sizing set it up to auto this one to auto and then everything was actually set up to auto I didn't have to do a lot of things so I don't know why this new page is giving us so much trouble let's just try to set it up on auto but I don't think it will be looking good so this one is too big let's just size it back a bit sizing auto, auto yeah you see it is it is much differently set up than the the previous one that I worked with for no reason apparently let me just mm, not pixels pixels are are not something you want to you want to play with it should be relative to the parent but it is not giving me the, the correct options I think this one may have a bug at this point because it, sh it shouldn't be so hard to do so let's just leave this navigation for now I will need to record an update on this one let's just work with the rest of the of the page to see how we can actually modify it so on this one this one is very simple we can just add on some spacing uh, using the margins we can just make it uh, make some padding on it actually not the padding we will increase the sizing on 100% leave it on auto on auto as well and yeah guys I think we today we will not be able to do it because it is not actually doing what I, I'm telling it to do so this I believe is not going to be uh, a good video if I continue just messing around mm, I can go in to the other one which I created when everything was fine for, for some reason of course every, something needs to break when I'm going live um, to show you what I created inside the navigation menu I just clicked on this one I went into each of the devices and I was just working with the with the sizing of it so as you can see it is an auto I was on I was going to relative to the parent and then sizing it out using these options however it is not working okay as it, it was before on here I was just uh, leaving 100% and then working with the margin as you can see the margin was applied so this is now moved into the middle on here I didn't touch anything what I did for the mobile is I have three icons over here and I left two icons on this one on the bottom one so I duplicated this first row and I popped it in here and when I actually reveal the mobile mobile view of this page let me just show you 
come on like that it actually separates it to to three rows and then two rows so that it is not all in the same uh same same row over here so this is what i did using the using this hiding of the elements but for some reason that is not going well today so um i think we will need to wrap this up and then continue this tomorrow for tomorrow i intended anyway uh, a full resizing and um responsiveness video so i will talk with the developers to 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 see why is this happening today and yesterday wasn't but yeah this is software is in beta mode guys uh we'll just need to work with what we have it was not like this yesterday but yes i believe you have now tools and things that you you can work with uh for for now let's just come back tomorrow and continue working on our site um this is the best thing i could i could offer you for now so as you can see this is also due to responsiveness i cannot actually click on the on this menu on my new site so i think we'll just need to postpone it so this video successfully failed or maybe unsuccessfully failed but now you have all the tools and all the things you would need to actually build out a page like this for mobile responsiveness of custom pages we need to actually work a bit more on it um, it takes a bit of extra time but i believe i would be able to give you an answer on that at a later time because i need to see what went wrong so let me just jump into the comments at this point um and see if there is something i can i can answer i do apologize for not being able to to teach you the 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 responsiveness but that is not the end of everything we will still have time to work on that okay questions why are the buttons not responding responding to go to a different block so at this point Juan Carlos, we are having some bugs as well with that. I have recorded and could share a different approach to that one. So let me just jump into the, to the normal view of a desktop. And then when you are actually uh, linking something, for example, I want to send somebody to this block over here. This is my social media block. I can give it a name in the custom attributes, uh, social media, so SM, okay? so. If I decide that my contact will go to that SM, if somebody clicks on contact us, I want to send them to SM. I can easily take the, the link of the site, okay, link it to this button, and then hashtag SM, okay, update. Let me just show you what happens when somebody goes to that page. So I named my block and I am linking in the, a, basically I'm, sh I'm telling the, the software to when somebody clicks contact us, go to that section below. So this is how it would work, okay? So I'm just opening it in a new uh, incognito window. So if somebody presses the contact us, you can see here at the bot bottom left that it is actually loading in our social media uh, block link because we just named our block social media or sm and if somebody clicks this they are scrolled down to this part so this is a workaround that you can use until then at this point it is true when you click on it and you choose block at this point it is not working as it should but um, yes you can do this workaround for that uh, question if i have a website with squarespace can i add this to my existing website no this what we are building is in groove pages in case you follow these rules and follow this technique and method what we did today we can actually go and you can actually build this on squarespace in case they allow that on their side i actually never use squarespace so i don't know if you can go into depth designing sites like what we did today Okay, question from Carol. I would like to add in a form container a check. The goal is to have not only the information but also the acceptance of user privacy policy. If I use MailChimp uh, form 
I can't add this check. How can I do this? It is very simple, Carol. So let's just say that this is our form and I want to add on a check mark over here. You go to elements, you scroll down to the form and here is a checkbox. You pull that in here and then it already has, I accept the privacy policy. You can choose if the checkbox is required. You can add on a name of it and then you can just add on a name attribute. You actually don't have to, uh, to connect this to anything if you just set it up the checkbox is required and update they cannot if they fill out the form they cannot continue without the actual checkbox uh, being clicked on so if they do click on it then they accepted the privacy policy so this is on that they need to set the form fields to require fill in yes so you can do that to require the form fields um, I didn't do it in this video, but yes, you would need to do that in order to, to have a properly functioning uh, form fields or contact form. Let me just go through others. Carol, uh, the same for the subscribe button in the footer. Can you show how to add a check for privacy policy? This check arrives to MailChimp when the user clicks on subscribe. Um, no, this checkbox doesn't appear in, in MailChimp. If you set it up like what I showed you here. The the user cannot submit a message or cannot submit a form without actually pressing this checkbox. Dun, dun, dun. I think you maybe need to resize down the actual image size. I'm not quite sure where this was on. Could be on the when I was creating the logo or Joshua, but could be something else as well. <laughs> this Joshua reminds me of a Canadian singer, Joshua Cadison, and the song he had in 90s, Send Me Postcards from LA. <laughs> nice. I need to listen to that one. Okay, I think the last question I have on here is versioning question. I love that we have the version view now. Uh, is there a way to clean up the versioning list from my end? because some design issues are only noticeable after the site's live. Preview doesn't reveal some issues. It leads to a number of tweaks here and there. My versioning list is too long. I know versions are not worth keeping. Um, I'm not quite sure what versioning you mean. Does it, do you refer back to these revisions, these versions, or I'm not quite sure what you mean. So uh, you can see you have these revisions. When you go in there, you can see different views. If this is something that you are talking about, uh, Keisha, then you could let me know. That would be awesome. I'm not quite sure what versions you mean. Um, if you mean these responsive versions, I actually don't. Keisha saying yes, yes to revisions. Mm, so the revisions there, they're just, they're saved on, on our servers. They're not making uh, the site look any different on your front end. The revisions, they don't actually publish anything live. So I don't know what issues you are having with this one, but let me just see. Carol is saying thanks but i mean using the mailchimp form that you used last time because integration with a normal form wasn't working do you remember um this is actually the same thing carol in case you use a mailchimp form it is the same basically you can see here input field here the form submit button the only the the container is set up to only be mailchimp there is no difference here the difference between the the form container is that you can choose different integrations so here it shows up sapier over here the mailchimp component only the container itself is only showing up mailchimp integration so i don't think this is doing any difference um either you use mailchimp or 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 the other form component it is the same thing um, yeah, so guys, that is basically it. I will be wrapping this up to our and 18 minutes video. I wanted to go and show you the responsiveness. However, there is a couple of things that need to be corrected first, and then we can actually get that video recorded for you. Um, in case you have any questions regarding this one, please, um, please let me know. 
try to add a check there, please. Okay, let's just add a check over here. Element checkbox. Um, so it shows up. So you can do Mailchimp in the Mailchimp component. It's the same um, type of form field what you are working in normally, uh, Carol. So she said, uh, try to add a check there, please. So this is why I, I just came in here, try to add a check. In case you want to do other input fields, you can just pull them in as well here. So for example, here, and I can set this up to be full name or let's say first name, and you can duplicate this one. Everything that is staying inside this MailChimp component, you can see everything that is green around, everything will be submitted over to, to MailChimp if set up correctly. Um, so yeah, that is also an option. But yeah, let me just wrap this up, guys, for today. Building out an awesome Contact Us page using GroovePages. Now you know how, now you know uh, why, and now you know with what, and actually the step-by-step -step process of of doing that. You also have access to tools that I shared with you on getting uh, illustrations like what we did with Joshua, and there is hundreds uh, more available for you to actually use on your sites, and also a way to edit those, modify the SVG with this method draw SVG editor. You can now create your logos using the photo P, and you have the access to flat icon, the, the site where I use uh, these icons even for all of my live streams. So this is an icon from Flat Icon. So you can go out there and create some awesome websites and pages. In this video, we showed how to do the contact page. But yeah, that's it, guys. I will be wrapping up. Thank you very much for staying so long and watching until the end. You are awesome. And then hopefully you come also to the, to the next videos that we'll be doing every day at 6 p.m. Central European time. We have a training which is translated over to 12, uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. So you can basically follow us every day on these videos. So one more time, thank you very much, guys, for watching. And then see you in the next one tomorrow. Bye-bye.